clean in. But can I have everybody's attention, please? We're going to call to order the Farragut Beer Board meeting for May 28th, 2015. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our last meeting, April 23rd, 2015. I'll make a motion for approval of the minutes as written. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes have been approved. The uh, next item is beer permit approval. It's an approval of a class five all premises permit for the following El Paraiso Tienda Hispana at located at 11110 Kingston Pike Suite 140. Yes, sir. This is actually a Hispanic market that is going to be located in the same center as Sam and Andy's and the applicants, all their information is in order and the motion is to approve a class five off premise beer permit for 11110 Kingston Pike, subject to obtaining a certificate of occupancy. Is the applicant present? Yes. I'd like to step to the podium, please. And Allison, where did you say it was going to be? It's in the same shopping center as Sam and Andy's. Oh, okay. Okay. If you'll state your name and address, please. Uh, my name is David, David Crisanto Blanco. Uh, my location is at 101 Silver Kingston Pike. Uh, my location is at 17, there's a glossy store. Okay, any questions by the board? When are you open? Are you open already? Uh, we're supposed to be open the last, last months ago, so because we are stopping because we had to wait to the permits. The permits supposed to be ready next month. Okay. And you said you're in the Sam and Andy's center, yes. is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Next to the, uh, we have next to the Mescal, you know, the restaurant Mescal. I understand, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, then I'll make, if there's Sorry. no further, I'll make a motion for approval of Class 5 off premises permit for the following El Paracio Tienda Hispana at 11110 Kingston Pike, Suite 140. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and it's passed. So, hope you do well. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Thank you. I believe that's uh, the last item on the agenda. So uh, the uh, board meeting, beer board meeting is now adjourned. Well, we have a couple of minutes before the TV goes on, so we'll have to wait for a minute.
Just started yesterday. First time, yeah, a lot of fun. Okay, we have a quorum, and uh, this is the Farragut Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for May 28th. We'll start by rising for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. First item is approval of the agenda, which is very short, should be easy to approve. I move for approval of the agenda as written. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item is the mayor's report, and uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to give out some awards. I think um, most people realize or uh, come to come to believe that uh, the town of Farragut is very beautiful, and and uh, um, you know, the, the thing that we hear most from uh, newcomers or people who come through is that this is really a beautiful town. We enjoy uh, the fact that uh, we have, we're surrounded by mountains and lakes, and uh, that certainly is a, a large part of the beauty. But uh, a lot of it is man-made, too, and uh, tonight we'll be... Uh, celebrating some of the man-made beauty in the town by giving beautification awards. How are we gonna do this? Marty, Marty Roberts, Marty. You know the drill. <laughs> yes, I do, thank you. Good evening. This is the only part I don't have mastered even yet, but, um, I'm happy to be here. I am Marty Rogers, and I'm happy to see you all and these folks too. Um, I'm actually a, sub I'm a member of the Beautification Committee, uh, substituting tonight for our chair lady who's uh, out of the state uh, for 31 years, this being the 32nd year members of the beautification committee have driven around town to select the winners of the beautification awards for landscaping and beauty around their business or residence. And these are the criteria to evaluate that we use. Landscape design, selection of plant material, maintenance, first impressions, and last impressions. And for this year, the committee has selected seven winners for 2015. And I'm going to share with you the names of those winners and the representative. And at the end of this listing, and another comment or two, then each of you as a representative will be called up to have your award presented by the board of Mayor and Alderman. <clears throat> Category for commercial office building, the winner is M&M &M Development, 11235 West Point Drive, number one. And at acceptance time, Sam Mishu, president, will be accepting. Category of commercial retail building, the winner is Dixie Lee Wines and Liquors, 13044 Kingston Pike. This award will be accepted by Melanie Brown. In the category of residential entrance, the winner is Fox Den. Accepting will be Martin Ritter, Homeowners Association President. In the category of religious institution, that winner is St. John Newman Catholic Church, 633 St. John Court. 
accepting that award will be Mr. Harry Shookman. In the category of Retail Commercial Complex, the winner is Best Buy, Parkside Drive. <clears throat> Mr. Daryl Whitehead will be accepting that award. In the category of Multifamily Residential Complex, the winner is NHC of Farragut, 120 Cabot Hill. Carla Lane, Administrator, will be accepting the award for NHC. In the newest category, Hotel Motel, the winner is Fairfield Inn and Suites, 11763 Snyder Road, accepting is Daniel Anderson. I uh, would like to also call attention to uh, the, some of the ladies that helped make this decision as they were in the newfound transportation that let us all go in one vehicle this year. And that was really nice. Um, so these ladies are right here and, and hard workers when we're needed. And I'd also like to call attention to our appreciation, though there's no special award, but our appreciation to the efforts that so many people, public works in particular, uh, offer to the town of Farragut to make the responsible for buildings and areas also beautiful. We're grateful for that. And as a committee member, we are appreciative and grateful that Arlene Higginbotham is our staff liaison and she's, she keeps us in line and <laughs> she tries and, and we appreciate her. So, um, do you want me to say the names one at a time now? Okay, for commercial office building, Mr. Sam Mishu. You get to have your picture taken too. Okay, but oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen. Thank you. Resi I think I'm trying to get tricked here. Let's see, commercial office building is what I've already called ahead of time, but now you get to see, no, you're seeing something else. You're seeing commercial retail. Dixie Lee Wines and Melanie Brown. Residential entrance, Fox Den, Mr. Martin Ritter. St. John Newman Catholic Church, the winner of the religious institution and accepting will be Mr. Harry Shuckman. And perhaps Mr. David Galloway. Yes. In the category of Retail Commercial Complex, Best Buy, the winner and the general manager there at, with Mr. Darrell Whitehead.
multifamily residential complex, an HC of Farragut, and that is Carla Lane, the administrator. Hotel Motel, the newest category, Fairfield Inn and Suites on Snyder Road being the award being accepted by Daniel Anderson. And now you all get your pictures made, and on behalf of the committee, we offer congratulations to each one of you. Hey, Marty, how about uh, the people that are here on the committee? All right. Marie Leonard, Holly Janney, Marianne McGill, Jerry Janelle, Barbara Allman. But right, now you can't you. see them, can you? They're hiding. <laughs> Thank you. As part of the mayor's report, I'd just like to mention that the town of Farragut and myself was appointed to the presidential task force. We met in Chicago over the last two days. I'm very grateful for the town of Farragut giving me the opportunity to represent our city on this committee. Next item then is Citizens Forum. I have no one signed up. Nobody. Next is approval of minutes from May 14th. I'll move for approval of the minutes as written. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm abstaining because I wasn't present. <clears throat> um, next item is ordinances. We have one, it's first reading, and it's the ordinance 15-08 fiscal year 2016 annual budget. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is uh, <clears throat> an ordinance that uh, obviously is a two reading process and is really one of the biggest decisions that the board's gonna make all year long is, is approving the budget for the town of Farragut. We start this process every year around January and February. We uh, begin the fiscal year on July 1st and then on June 30th of the following year. But when we get started, we want to talk about uh, goal setting and things that are going to help us reach our potential as a town and a community in our future. Um, we get together with the, I get together myself with the department heads. We come up with a list of priorities that we have, then we get together with the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and, and refine that list. Um, we work off of our vision, and you can see that on the screen here. I'm not going to read everything off to you tonight, but, but basically we want to be a distinctive residential community, something that, uh, you know, is different and uh, is great about our community. Go to the next slide. Um, some of our goals that we have, our five-year goals, we try to map down and, and get into, uh, maintain our financially sound town, strengthen the local economy, develop our historic assets, facilitate future growth development and redevelopment, and expand leisure amenities. Uh, from that, we come up with our top priorities, and these policy agenda items are the ones that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen stated back in February were your top priorities and high priorities and moderate priorities for this year. We've actually got, um, under the policy items, we've actually, uh, just a couple I wanted to talk about because we're already underway on, on some of these, is the Campbell Station Inn Master Plan. We've currently got a committee in place that's working towards uh, trying to come up with a use for the property long term. Um, we talked a lot about the uh, Mayor Bob Leonard Park turf field expansion and trying to move that up into the CIP, uh, and you'll see that uh, this year when we get to the CIP here in just a few minutes. 
Um, some of the high priority items with McPhee Park expansion, again, that was a big priority for the board to try to move up in the CIP. And I think we've been able to accomplish that as well. And the town center district trying to get some development occurring within that district. And I think there's certainly some exciting things hopefully coming along here real soon to start uh, implementing that uh, strategy going forward. For our management agenda, these are all things that uh, we, we again try to work on on an internal basis, more of a from the department head level and the employee level. Uh, one is we're really trying to work on getting a mixed use neighborhood district uh, developed this year. It's a little bit different than a town center district, more of a regional approach and, and, and having some commercial nodes out there with uh, mixed use. Uh, and also uh, trying to recruit more regional uh, sporting events uh, throughout town. Uh, the other thing we're going to have as part of our budget process, and you'll see in our budget as well, some of the high priority items, we're completing our stormwater infrastructure analysis. That's our biggest utility that we own and maintain. We want to make sure that we're taking care of that and we have a, a revenue stream to pay for uh, future improvements that we need to make to that. Uh, and another big one uh, internally is a comprehensive IT strategic plan something that uh, is the backbone of probably every business in the country now is IT, and uh, we want to make sure we have a good uh, idea of where we need to head with that into the future. So looking at our revenues, this is uh, always what we first try to define is where are our revenues going to be next year, where are they at right now. Uh, if we look at uh, the proposed budget for FY15-16, we're estimating approximately $9.1 million in revenues for next year. It's actually a 10% increase over the budget amount for FY15 that we're in currently. Um, much of that is from the local sales tax. We've had a pretty good run in local sales tax over the last uh, couple of years. We've actually, if you go to the next slide, Allison, uh, we've actually seen our local sales tax increase over the last three fiscal years almost a little over 31%. Um, right now, we're tracking a little bit slower on that uh, for the end of the year. We're around 35 to 4% increase a year to date over last year. But certainly, we've had some very strong revenue growth in our local sales tax, and, and certainly a lot of that has to do with the Turkey Creek development and some of the big boxes we've been able to uh, uh, get into town here in the last couple of years. Our second largest portion of revenue comes from our state shared taxes. Um, approximately $1.4 million goes into the general fund from state share tax. The remaining uh, $540,000 goes into our state street aid fund, which we use for resurfacing of our roads uh, and uh, uh, see signage and the different things around uh, town for our streets. If you look at our breakdown of all of our revenue sources, you can see local sales tax makes up uh, well over half of our budget with state, state sales tax coming in a close second. We've got the also wholesale drink tax makes up around a million dollars of our budget. And then we've got some intergovernmental uh, taxes as well as the hall income tax that rounds out our revenue structure. Next, we look at our expenditures. Next year, we're estimating 6.8 million in expenditures. Again, that's a 1% increase over our FY15 budget. Um, most of our expenditures are going to deal with personnel because we are a service industry. We provide services to the community. Therefore, uh, people are probably our most uh, important thing that we have here to be able to provide good service to our community and to our citizens. Um, that makes up about 57% of our total personnel costs, or excuse me, our overall operating costs. And if you look at our 10-year history of revenues and expenditures, you can see that we've had every single year um, a good bit of revenues over expenditures. We take those monies that we have uh, in excess revenues and we've been putting those into our investing them back into the community as part of our capital investment program. So it's been important that we have that so we can pay for these projects with cash as we haven't had really any uh, large debt other than the Campbell Station Inn in probably about 15 years. A couple of changes I just wanted to highlight in this year's budget going from uh, FY15 to next year's budget of FY16. One is we're planning on doing a special census. Uh, special census, we hope to uh, be able to get back uh, at least $100,000 or more every year based on uh, a new population count uh, that we hope to receive. We're also looking at doing a salary survey for our town employees. It's been a few years so now since we did a class comp study, which is a pretty comprehensive survey of employees, uh, job titles, and duties. This is going to look more at just salaries in general. 
Um, that's money to both do the plan and also implement it halfway through the year if, if it's appropriate. We're also looking at the IT strategic plan that I discussed earlier, trying to make sure we're prepared for our future and when it comes to IT and, and computing. Um, also looking at town hall LED lighting, we're applying for a grant for that, which would be a 50-50 grant. If we don't get the grant, we won't be doing the LED lighting plan, but we did need to put the money in there as we've applied for that grant. Won't find out something about that until after the fiscal year uh, is in place. We also have a 3% employee merit uh, package uh, in, the, in the budget this year as well. Um, and we've added two um, uh, positions this year. One is changing a part-time public works administrative assistant to a full-time position. That, uh, that department is our largest department. It has the most work orders and programs that come through it. Uh, so we're really trying to make sure that we uh, provide a good service uh, in that department. And the other one is doing a full-time lead park assistant. We've had seasonal assistants in parks for years. Uh, we've had a little bit of an issue trying to have consistency in that area. And so what we want to do is hire one full-time assistant, which will then reduce the number of seasonal hours that we will need. And so those are the budget impacts that you see there before you. Overall, the general fund is balanced. We have approximately 2.3 million uh, participate uh, in uh, revenue over expenditures this year. We're able to have a rainy day fund of over $2 million and available fund balance of over $4 million uh, going into next year's budget. Our second largest uh, budget that we have is the capital investment program. And this is a five-year budget program. Uh, we plan ahead for uh, fiscal years 17, 18, 19, and 20, but we actually budget for the year 2016, which is what we are going to get into right now. We've uh, broken this out into three different general categories. One is general government projects. Uh, you can see here we've, we've been working on putting money away in land acquisition for the last few years, as well as pedestrian greenway connectors. Um, and that would continue on in the, in the current CIP, uh, the way it's written now. Um, overall, this year we're planning on $1.6 million in capital investment uh, projects in general government. Um, if you look at our next category, which is parks, this is where we talked about earlier in our planning st strategies. We've uh, looked at, we're looking at replacing the splash pad this year and also and expanding the splash pad, excuse me, uh, and also looking at uh, putting in one turf field. We've got one now at field two, I believe, at Mayor Bob Leonard Park. We're looking at putting another one in at field one, which is on the Harrison Road side um, in this next fiscal year and certainly trying to then in the next fiscal year, FY17, uh, would, would be adding another turf field to have three turf fields at Mayor Bob Leonard Park. Um, we also have McPhee Park expansion in future years, uh, but certainly not uh, planned necessarily in FY16. For our engineering projects and road projects, uh, again, the, the biggest project that we talked about was Union Road during the CIP workshops that we had and trying to move Union Road as a priority up in the CIP. We've been able to do that. Uh, we, we have planned uh, design and engineering next year in FY16 uh, with right-of-way acquisition in 17 and then construction in 18. Uh, we have other, uh, several other engineering projects planned next year, uh, including a, uh, a, a signal there on Kingston Pike and Virtue Road, as well as uh, going through town and, and doing all of our signal timing again uh, through a CMAT grant we received from TDOT. Uh, overall in the CIP, We've got approximately $21 million planned in CIP projects over the next five years. Um, just for FY16, we've got a total of $4.5 million in funding for those projects, and we'll have an available fund balance of $3.5 million at the end of FY16. And at the end of FY20, still have a fund balance of $600,000. Another uh, fund that we have is our State Street Aid Fund. Again, I mentioned this earlier. This is the fund that actually goes into resurfacing all of our streets here in town. We're putting approximately uh, $540,000 of our revenues, which is from the state uh, uh, state uh, gasoline tax, into, into this fund. Uh, it helps us uh, repave a couple of miles of roads every single year. We're also adding another $120,000 from the general fund into this account, and that'll give us an ending fund balance of about 617000 at the end of the fiscal year that we will end in FY16. 
We also have the equipment replacement fund. This is the fund for all of our vehicles uh, throughout town that we replace on different schedules. Uh, we've been able to move some of those out into future years because uh, Bud and his crews have done a great job of maintaining those vehicles the last few years. Uh, we're, we're, and the departments are doing a great job of letting them know if there's issues that come up to, uh, to make sure they get on them right away. Again, we've got $150,000 transferring from the general fund into this fund, and we have uh, about $140,000 worth of equipment that we plan on purchasing this year out of that fund. At the end of the year, we'll have approximately $638,000 still left in the equipment replacement fund. We also have the insurance fund. The insurance fund is where we have funded uh, quite a few different uh, retirement uh, benefits over the last couple of years. Uh, we do not have any plans for any expense this year in that fund, and so it will remain a balance of, of approximately $99,000 in that account uh, through the end of the FY16 year. So with that, uh, we present you a balanced budget, which is what we're required to do as part of the uh, state comptroller's uh, and the uh, state of Tennessee require us as local governments to do. And I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that the board may have on first reading. I think you've done a very thorough job. <laughs> you want a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We'll see that the next time, right? <coughs> next item is business items, and the first one is approval of professional services agreement between the town of Farragut and Icon Enterprises slash Civic Plus. Thanks, Mayor. In your package, you'll find the draft agreement, which will renew our contract with the existing website host, uh, Civic Plus, for the next four years. Civic Plus, to give a background, provides web hosting services for over 1,800 communities. And upon execution of this agreement, we'll begin the redesign of the town's website. Uh, that new design will provide new technology, new portals uh, for our engagement, and reflect the new brand adoption that we did uh, at the last meeting, or two meetings ago. Total cost over four years will not exceed $35,092.95. That's broken down um, with a 5% escalator for each year, starting in 2015. And we recommend approval of this item. Are they local? They are not, they're located in Kansas. How does that work out? Great. They've been a great provider for us. Um, very large company. Uh, you know, anytime we have an issue, we can call them, and they're they're on top of it. Um, and if you know you've looked at the functionality of the website, it's very smooth, very seamless, very user friendly. Do they spend any time here? Yeah, I don't think they've ever been here. But we just to give you a little more background, we've looked at other companies, and this they're by far the best um, for what we need. Uh, they specialize in local government websites. That's fine. I'm, I was just curious. Well, with your recommendation, Mr. Palmer, I will make a motion to approve the contract renewal between the Town of Farragut and Icon Enterprises, Incorporated, for a four-year term beginning May 28, 2015, in the amount of. $8,141.98 for the first year with a 5% escalator for each year thereafter. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next one is approval of professional services agreement with Duncan and Associates uh, impact fee study and program. Also mine. Um, again, in your package, you'll find the uh, typical professional service agreement that we do. And if um, you, you may recall, we have actually contracted with Duncan Associates before for the same um, study, although the scope of work is going to be different. So we're familiar with, uh, with Duncan. And I'll just give you a little background on the process. The 
the impact fee study was identified as a priority in the town strategic plan and reflected in the 2015 work program. In late 2014, the town published an RFQ from qualified uh, to receive proposals from qualified consulting firms for the purpose of conducting a complete study of the town's vehicular infrastructure, a needs assessment, and feasibility of implementing development fees for improving this infrastructure, and those fees are commonly known as impact fees. The town received two statements of qualification, one from Tischler Biss out of Maryland and Duncan Associates out of Texas. Both of these proposals were evaluated and scored by an internal team, uh, myself, Ashley Miller, Assistant Community Development Director, and Daryl Smith, the town engineer. And then after we scored them, we verified the references. Duncan Associates was by far the most qualified for the project, um, for this initiative, and on, on completion of the scoring, uh, we began contract negotiations with Duncan Associates, which resulted in this contract. Duncan uh, will be working on this project with their subconsultant, Corradino Group. They're also, uh, they have a Tennessee office, so they'll, they'll have some local presence here. Um, and they specialize in, in transportation, um, engineering, infrastructure needs, and so forth. And the, uh, between those two, they'll conduct a full analysis and complete the study within six to nine months. We've got it down for November 1st, um, but since there's been a little bit delay, a delay in the negotiations, where we might have to push that a little bit, but we're shooting for, shooting for November 1st on that. And built into the scope of work, we have three separate public meetings, <laughs> so we can involve the public and the development community in this process as well. And the total cost for this project is a lump sum cost of $64,000. $460, and we recommend approval. And I know this is a, uh, this contract's a little complex, so I'll try to answer any questions you may have on it and the scope of work. Uh, when, when do they plan to start, and how long will it take? They, we, in this, the discussions we've had, they want to start right away. Um, they're, they believe they can finish it within six months, which puts us, puts us out to about October, November. And they, they understand this is kind of a pressing issue with us right now, so yeah. they're, they're in the loop on that, so they know we need to get something done pretty quick. The discussion. Well, as you may suspect, I have some discussion points I'd like to put forward on this. Um, I think the town touts itself as being self-sustaining and debt-free and not having a property tax. Uh, but now we're talking about imposing an impact fee. And, and just a quick straw poll of the uh, board here. Who do you think pays impact fees? Alderman Pinchuk, who, who do you think pays impact fees? Well, it sounds like the impact fee is being paid by the people that buy the homes in the subdivisions that um, that these people are going to build. Okay. Uh, Alderman LaMarche? That's probably part of it. And then for any work or anything that has to be done on roads, it would have to be the developer, possibly. Okay. Ultimately, consumer pays for everything. Okay. So the, the argument that I hear in favor of impact fees is that the developer needs to pay his fair share of the impact that he's creating on our, um, on our uh, infrastructure. Um, of course, this is a fallacy. The developer doesn't pay anything. Development is a business like any other. Uh, the developer is, uh, as Mr. Mishu, I'm sure could have told you, is in the business of making a profit, just as tailors and doctors and um, everyone else is. Um, he's not going to develop where there is a smaller margin. So obviously, he has to recoup his costs. He has to recoup the time cost of money. So this is going to get passed on to someone. What typically happens is... The, the landowner who is seeking to sell their property, his property is devalued by the amount of that impact fee as opposed to a, a, a 
landowner in an area that does not have impact fees. So either the landowner is going to pay this fee, which comes down to a property tax. When we founded this town, as mayor, you were, you were present at that time. Um, uh, the town did not anticipate a property tax, and yet what this is is a property tax that falls indiscriminately or that falls extremely discriminatorily upon one very small segment of the population that has typically no voice because for every acre they develop, there's going to be three or four voters or up to ten voters um, that will uh, seek to reduce their liability or their expenses. Um, there's not too many uh, developers or landowners or business people typically on the, uh, the governing boards. So it's either the landowner in the form of a, of a property tax or it's the end user, as you stated, Mayor. Now, the time, if we're going to do something like this, the time to do it would be in the beginning when a town is new, there's a large area yet to be developed, so it can be spread evenly over over all the uh, developable land. But we're in the final stages of the development of town. There's very little developable land left. So this is going to fall extremely disproportionately, place a burden on a very few, I mean, probably a handful of people are going to end up bearing the, the burden of this when essentially everybody else has had a free ride, if you, if you want to look at it that way. Um, it is compulsory in nature. The people who are impacted by it have no say in it. They have no voice. And it, it, there's a face on this. Uh, you know, I see an elderly widow on her deathbed. Her greatest concern is that her children in dividing up the estate are going to have to deal with the town of Farragut. And, uh, um, an elderly doctor who has lived in a town 30 years before the town was ever even uh, ever even imagined, who bought his property, paid for it, has paid taxes on it all this time, and now these people are looking at a fee, a tax, a compulsory burden that is being placed on them in the tens, the hundreds, and sometimes even the millions of dollars. Um, the net effect is to claw from their hands their, their, uh, uh, the inheritance of their children, um, and I, I just think this is a really poor way for the for the small amount of benefit the town will receive to try to finance its streets. It's it's discriminatory. It's unfair, and it's uh, disproportionate. And although we can probably by virtue of the number of votes that would support it and the authority of this board, we can probably impose it. But I'm, I must strongly object that it is unfair, uh, discriminatory, and, uh, and wrong by its very nature. This, this country is not a democracy, although that word is used uh, ad nauseum. Democracy is essentially mob rule, and as Ben Franklin said, democracy is two wolves and a lamb sitting down to vote on what to have for lunch. Um, and, and that's kind of what this comes down to. Now, I was asked to apologize to this board the last time we brought this up because I used some unpleasant words like extortion, shakedown, uh, blackmail, racketeering, etc. cetera. And, uh, but anyway, any way you analyze this, it's what it comes down to, and I can't apologize for it unless someone can show me where that, where that's incorrect, where where it is fair, where it is appropriate, where it is something that this town can stand for and can uh, can stand behind and and be proud of. I don't see it. I can't support it, and I feel that at this time, this late in the game, to try to impose impact fees is to spend sixty thousand dollars to find out how much we can claw from the hands of these last few landowners in the town of Farragut. Um, I, I can't support it, and I must oppose it in the strongest of terms. Well, we've had discussion on this. I'm ready to vote. Um, I move for approval. 
I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, Alderman Markley, what other suggestion would you have for us when we don't have all of the funds to maintain all the roads? I mean, uh, do we want to have what other, we, we have to have some other form of revenue? I, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to see both sides of it and be fair. Uh, well, we've managed to improve. Uh, I think the, the figure was, uh, Mr. Smoke can correct me if I'm wrong, I think we spent $28 million on road improvements in the town of Farragut, um, something like that, of which the town itself actually only paid, what was it, like six, eight million, a small percentage of it. Um, Ten. Ten, 10 million out of about $30 million. Okay, so we have, we have pretty good roads in town, but after 35 years, We've got a handful of, of roads that are that are narrow, treacherous, dangerous, uh, that our citizens are being forced to drive on. After 35 years, we've put we've put parks, we've put recreation, we've put ball fields and turf fields and uh, uh, historic buildings ahead of improving these roads. I think we have the money to do it. I think we need to look at our priorities. Uh, the town is not in debt. I don't think we would have to. Uh, float a bond or go in debt to do this. But I think in fairness, we probably need to tell these landowners that, hey, you've been paying property, you've been paying taxes on your properties, you've been good citizens of this town for, since before it was ever even here. Uh, we're not gonna hold you up, we're not gonna hold, put you over a barrel to let your land be developed. Let them go ahead and develop it. Let's put these on our, capital investment plan for as soon as we can do it. If we want to uh, advance some uh, some of these on our schedule, maybe put back a, a park improvement or a turf field or something like that. Uh, let's put a new roof on the, uh, on the Campbell Station Inn and let it sit for a couple of years. I don't care, but I think that in fairness to this, these last few landowners in town who, who have through no fault of their own happen to be situated on streets that after 35 years have not been improved. It's not their fault and they shouldn't bear the burden of it. And uh, I think we have, we have, well, if the town of Farragut doesn't have the means to improve these last few roads and they're gonna hold these properties hostage to do it, I think we've got a priority problem. We don't have a financing problem, we have a priority problem. If that answers your question, Alderman March. Next item is the attorney, uh, the uh, town administrator's report. I have nothing to report tonight, Mayor. All right. We have no attorney, so we have no attorney report. And we are now adjourned.